Well, this is Katia. She's been our translator on this adventure. She's been doing a sterling job. She's also a fellow vegan, which is lovely. And apart from doing a translation for us, I know you're heavily involved in the world of dog rescue in Bulgaria. Just tell me about that and what you do. Well, um, that is correct. And thank you for <laughs> being a vegan too. Um, I first got involved in stray animals rescue uh, about two and a half years ago when um, I found the litter of puppies in the snow in the snow in February which were basically dumped by a rubbish bin the community rubbish bin and I couldn't walk away so I picked them up and I brought them home and it's been a roller coaster ever since and um, throughout these two and a half years now I have uh, been making uh, relationships with other fellow rescuers and trying to find a way to improve the quality of life of those street animals out, out there on the, our streets. And um, I've been in touch with private rescuers, I've been in touch with other organizations and um, basically our main, what our work consists of is if we find an injured stray animal, we take him to the vets, we treat him or her and we never ever return them back to the street. We do try to rehome them and uh, I personally have a couple of those that I could never let go of. <laughs> <laughs> now I've asked this next question um, a couple of times this week and I've sort of I think got quite vague answers. Um, I'll ask you the same thing. How do people in Bulgaria uh, perceive dogs? What do they think of dogs in general? Well, um, really, there's a difference in the areas of uh, where you would ask this, this question, really. Um, in general, for many, many years, the dog was associated with a doorbell, really, just uh, being chained outside the house and um, really got any human attention or any good food. They've been fed with bread or corn and um, never let go of the chain. Um, the same attitude is transferred towards the stray animals because understandably many people fear a barking dog, although the dog would, ne would not necessarily attack them, but just the sound of barking is a scary thing for some. And um, the good thing is there is now a movement be amongst mostly young people who recognize the fact that um, the dog is actually more than just a guard or a show of companion. Yes, mm -hmm. more and not just a show of uh, object, really. Um, so I have not agreed for a long time the way that dogs have been treated in my country and um, I'm really very hopeful to see this seeds of change that are now showing in some pockets of Bulgaria mostly the bigger towns. I know you've got some views also on how the um, how the media are sort of tackling the um, situation with dogs in Bulgaria. Unfortunately, uh, I would like to see a different way the media um, fa uh, the media shows the problem with the stray population. There is a problem; this everyone recognizes it. But also, there was basically an inside uh, a war against the stray animals, and um, we did. There were unfortunately two cases with people being attacked, but. Um, things were really presented in a way that uh, the dogs were crucified and um, there was a cow and mass poisoning followed and um, you think the media sort of stirred the situation up 
Absolutely, it incited all that, and uh, a lot of animal rights act activists think it's uh, a purposeful distraction of the other problems that are in the country. For example, in the town of Silistra, where I lived for some time, um, there was an announcement in the local paper that a woman has, uh, a person has been bitten by a dog, and then. We checked in the local hospital, they uh, denied there has been such a patient and then uh, the response from the media was that the patient was treated in a hospital in another town but we did call there as well and we never, and the hospital there also said that they have not treated such a case in the past tw uh, 48 hours and um, the interesting thing is that there was no follow up on the side of the media which means basically they um, uh, accepted the fact that they have been mm. um, not correct and uh, this is done purely to mold the mindset of people. Just a few days ago, I think just before we arrived here, um, there was a, a story of uh, a dog, was he chained to a car and dragged along just tell me about that this is a horrendous act of cruelty and um, whoever I have spoken since we just cannot even start to comprehend what's been happening in the head of this um, person who dragged the dog and um, there was a huge uproar mostly on the internet and uh, the case went spread internationally and um, what really, really is wrong in this picture is apart from the uh, proprietor of the cruel act, is that the policeman who initially answered the call for the cruelty returned the dog to the, to the same person. Basically, he returned the victim to the abuser, which violates any kind of law we have. And, um, but uh, afterwards the dog was found buried in the outskirts of the village and um, tomorrow there will be a protest in the nearby bigger city and um, a lot of many people are involved with this because they don't want to raise their kids in an environment where they will be conditioned to such cruelty because they see one picture then a month later there will be another case because this is what's happening in Bulgaria pretty much every month that there, there is something big coming up on internet but these are one case here one case there it is happening quite a lot and the problem is I understand that that the um, perpetrators aren't being prosecuted no, they have not been. We have a fantastic war on animal cruelty and uh, cruelty to animal, animals is a crime and there is a, you can, the sentence is basically going to prison apart from being fined but uh, no one has still been prosecuted this way since 2011 when the war was put in, war on paper. Mm, and. Um, the, pro uh, the person who dragged the dog has been now uh, kept in custody for 24 hours. He was found and there is now an investigation going on. And what we are, the, uh, the animal rights act activists are were really trying to finally make this war work and implement it. The institutions are being really passive. They have really been discouraging uh, witnesses. And this time we are hopeful that this person will be punished for what he's done, fairly punished. Well, listen, thank you for your uh, passion and for all you do for the animals, as I know you do an awful lot. In fact, we're going to lose you now, aren't we? Because you've got to uh, go off and do more doggy rescue work. So right. we'll say goodbye and thank you for this week. Well, thank you for visiting my country and thank you for being involved. <laughs>
Absolutely, Wendy. It's the so-called uh, Plovdiv um, Animal Welfare uh, Society, and uh, it was um, registered in uh, 2016. That, that's when I, I got actively involved in uh, animal wel welfare, because there's so much need for that, that kind of activity in, in Bulgaria. And it's a small group of volunteers, and so we've been trying in to help animals in various way, ways. I mean, it's obviously helping strays on the street, supporting them with food, water, and some medical care. And we've been trying to, um, uh, to rescue and find homes for other strays, which is much more difficult, obviously, because we don't have that network of uh, foster care homes, and uh, it's very difficult to find uh, shelter for these animals. I you, you find uh, someone to adopt them. I understand that you also get um, proactively involved in, in more the politic side of things. Exactly. We've been lobbying Parliament uh, for proper legislation, uh, especially before 2008, because we were pushing so hard, actually, for this Animal Welfare Act to, to, be, to, to, be, to be passed in Parliament. And uh, the funny thing is, it's, it's one thing we do, actually, and we only do it in Plovdiv. And you can see Georgi Serbezov, he's one of uh, my... Um, uh, brothers in arms, to say, and we've been actually challenging various acts of, of Parliament in court, actually, quite successfully, which is unbelievable, you see, because it's a, it's a post-communist totalitarian country, and, uh, and people usually think, no, you can never, um, you can never find any justice in, in the Bulgarian court, but, but you can, actually, because these, these, these are not political cases. Well, we, we, we fight for... for proper and adequate legislation, basically, and quite often the judges agree with us. So we've been um, doing a lot of recommendation for um, uh, laws that haven't been passed yet, and later, if we see some inadequate laws, I mean, uh, being passed, then, then we challenge them in court, so they have to sit again and then basically modify them later, I mean, those people in Parliament. So it's, it, it's been so exciting because, as far as, as, far as I know, we are the pioneers in that particular field, uh, rescuing and finding homes for animals. Okay, everybody does it, you know. But challenging various acts of parliament, I'm talking laws, and I'm talking ordinances, uh, various regulations, you know, we challenge them. Even municipal regulations, we, we, uh, quite successfully, and most of the time successfully, we challenge them in court. So we want proper legislation because, as I said earlier to, to uh, Lorraine, I believe that uh, people do not respond very well to rational reasoning, and that's one of the reasons why slavery was aboli abolished. Not because people realized it was immoral and unethical. It was, actually, but they didn't care because there were economic interests behind that. But because in 1833, I mean, th th they passed this, uh, this Slavery Ab Abolition Act, and that's how we, uh, that you need a system change first. Proper legislation. The lawmakers have to do it properly. And then... The behavior changes. I mean, and a few generations down down the road, people don't even think whether it's legal or whether it's, I mean, ethical or moral. But they just take it for granted, and they don't do that kind of th kind of thing. The same I, thing I've with animal welfare. Actually, we know, I mean, cruel cruel treatment of animal animals is wrong. But if you don't back it up with proper laws, if you don't enforce these laws, how can things change? And that's how, when the behavior changes, then the mindset changes. Then people. But, say, but oh, are you seeing any any progress? Not now not or not? I mean, I, I've heard um, several times since I've been in Bulgaria this idea that people in Bulgaria see dogs as no better than vermin. Mm. How, how do you respond to that? I think it's some kind of... Um, it's been inherited from the past, actually. And I think uh, it's been beca mostly because uh, this attitude, uh, because uh, Bulgaria... Um, was occupied in 1944 by the Russians. The, this Stalinist regime was actually basically uh, imposed on, on, Bo on Bulgaria. And it's, 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 it's a kind of Stalinist approach for, for solving problems, basically. Because, I mean, uh, 50 years, that, that's, that was the only way of solving economic, political, and social problems. I mean, by, by killing and by, by murder, basically. So it's, it's some kind of an inheritance we inherited from the not so distant past, actually. And that's the kind of a mindset that people have now. And, 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 and with no um, uh, active, uh, with not, and with no mechanism to enforce the existing, I mean, uh, legislation. So there's nothing to force these people to think otherwise. Education, none. There's nothing at schools. I mean, um, you don't see any educational programs 
in that respect, I mean, so to, to teach people in some kind of, some compassion and towards animals. You don't see that. And then, then you got ignorance and so, and ignorance is like a hereditary disease when it goes, it goes in the family, from one generation to the other. I mean, if, if the father is, is abusive, and if, if he abuses animals in front of his children, they, how, how these children, they don't know any better. So that, that's ignorance, and that, that has to break. But the thing is, uh, it's, uh, things are very stagnant in the moment. We've been trying very hard to change that mindset, uh, and it, it hasn't been working, actually. The things, th this Animal Welfare Act, it's, it's a decent act, and we fought so, so hard for, for that. But the thing is, uh, that our institutions, they, they, they don't care about this. I mean, they, they carry on, and, 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 and basically, for the last, it's been one of the most actively sabotaged acts, actually one of the most actively sabotaged laws in Bulgaria, that's the Animal Welfare Act, because uh, for the last s 50 or 60 years, I mean, the, 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 the stray dogs and cats, they've been subjected to, to indiscriminate and, and mass slaughter, basically. It's still going on. Now, you, you say that. I'm going to bring up another point, and I've got some figures written down here. Um, apparently, in Sofia, there are not many dogs on the streets now at all. Now, apparently, a couple of years ago, and various people and organisations uh, have given very different figures from 9,000 on the streets up to 200,000 on the streets, even at the most conservative figure of 9,000. Mm -hmm. Apparently now, most of the dogs have disappeared. Where have they gone? Well, that's a good question. That's what we've been asking, I mean, for the last five years. Because it's the absolutely the same situation in Plovdiv. Now, we used to monitor the figures. Uh, we used to monitor the, the number of dogs being euthanized and having and saying euthanized. I mean, Bulgarian euthanasia is not... <laughs> is something quite different, uh, basically. Uh, describe that to me. Oh, it's a horrible thing, basically, because we, we've had wit witnesses who, by accident, witnessed, I mean, how dogs are, are brutally, I mean, slaughtered, actually in in the that horrible place called called isolator now they call them shelters it has nothing to do with care for animals anyway so we we used to monitor but no, so you have to be more specific well, how do you mean they kill them oh with uh, with uh, with sticks they used to kill them. Well, what, what the witnesses said, and it, it, there's, there's a small portion, uh, basically there's a small video clip which is in the internet, so I can, I can post the link to you. And the witnesses, they described, because they went inside looking for a dog, a stray dog that got lost, basically, probably picked from these, uh, the, uh, these men, uh, the animal control uh, people, and they went looking for the, for the dog, actually. It was maybe 8.30 in the morning, so th they were not expected then. And um, uh, there was three of them, two boys and a girl. And the girl went inside to check the, these cells to see if the dog is alive and, and available. And then the, the two boys, they heard some, some screaming coming from one of the garages, and, and they, they, they looked through the window. There's a small window there. And they were horrified, actually. They saw a pile of bodies, and half the, half most of the dogs were dead. And the other, the, the other few dogs were actually struggling for their life. Can you imagine? And there were two dog handlers inside, and they were holding these, they were holding, oh, they had these, um, you know, how they killed them, basically, is, is catch them with this uh, hook with the left hand, and with the right hand, uh, blow them, you know, repeatedly on the Man. head, in the head until they're dead, and uh, that's a horrible thing. And I, I'm sure there are various different ways, actually, of killing dogs in these facilities. Uh, it just it so happened that we only have these... these uh, uh, so, sorry, do you think there's been a concerted campaign to, to get these dogs off the street, and that's why they're just oh. not there anymore? Oh, absolutely, it's been orchestrated. I mean, this, this kind of activity cannot go, I mean, uh, unpunished for a long time, and without the... Mm, uh, if it's not tolerated, basically, by, by the municipal um, authorities, because obviously they know what's, what's been happening. Now, the thing is, nobody wants, wants these dogs on the streets, but the thing is, uh, what it says in the Animal Welfare Act is that we're supposed to, they're supposed to trap, neuter, and return these dogs. So, well, basically, uh, uh, returning these dogs is an essential part of this program. I mean, if you trap and neuter these dogs and kill them later, it's just, just wasted money. What's the point of doing that? the whole thing of catching and transporting them, accommodating them, and then killing them in the end? So, and it's illegal at the end of the day, not mentioning the, the ethical side. But the thing is, we've been hearing these, uh, these um, we've been hearing this, uh, and the media, obviously, I mean, uh, accusing us, the animal welfare activists, that we wanted these dogs on the streets. It's not us, mm. it's, it's not us, we, it's, 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 the, it's the lawmakers who, 
who actually wrote this uh, this this down, and and it's a law now, so it, it's uh, it has to be done. It's obligatory, so it's not for me to say what has to be done. It's written down very clearly, so they just have to do it. Otherwise, it's illegal activity, but they don't care. I mean, they they, they just, it, we we hear these comments on on the media all the time. Okay, why are these dogs let on the streets? Uh, because the lawmakers decided that that's the way, that's the ethical way to. to it should be done because if you castrate, if you neuter all the dogs in, in, in this city, for instance, I mean, there'll be no more dogs coming. And if you, and if you educate those people not to, to throw their animal companions out on the street or, or neuter them and not let them out wandering on, wandering on the street, so there'll be no new, new dogs. And, if, and you obviously, if you, if, you, if you do all these things, which are very basic and simple things, and there's so much money wasted on a yearly basis, I mean, uh, things would have, would, would have been different. But the thing is, we used to monitor this facility before 2008, and they would actually kill maybe 3,000 dogs in Plovdiv every year. And that, that figure is constant, 2003, 4, 5, 6. It's a constant figure, which means if you kill 3,000 dogs, that's Plovdiv and the surrounding villages, obviously uh, you get another 3,000 next year. Now, in 2008, they started trapping, neutering, and returning on paper at least, and they claim that they neuter maybe four, seven hundred dogs every year, and it's been going for, for five years. So seven, that's another three and a half thousand dogs neutered. We should have them on the streets now in Plovdiv, and we should have maybe another seven, eight thousand who are not neutered yet. They're part of the program, but they haven't been manipulated yet. And and we should we should basically have some maybe around ten thousand dogs on the streets of Plovdiv. And in fact, and how many are there? Maybe two hundred. So wow. We are, we are because millions have been wasted, millions of money, that taxpayers' money. Is anyone investigating this? No, no. Uh, we, 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 me and Georgie, we wrote numerous um, petitions to the public prosecutor in Plovdiv for crimes, for criminal activity, because embezzling money is a criminal activity. We know they forge documents because they kill dogs. We know that they do it. We can't see it because it's done behind closed doors, you see. But we have circumstantial evidence because we go in there and, so, and there is a, this um, access to information law in Bulgaria which uh, gives us certain rights basically, well, as citizens, we can ask for information. And amazing thing actually, 2008, but that's before they, st they, before they started forging these documents because now there is nothing on paper just to cover their asses, you see. Mm -hmm. They're very careful now and they've, they've sort of mutated They've mutated like, like viruses, you see, these people, just to continue with the killings, but not being caught. So, you see, we, we, we went in there, inside, on the 27th of May, uh, 2008, and they were supposed to, to, to trap, neuter, and return dogs. And we counted 2,007 registered animals who were actually caught. That's for, let's say, uh, from 4th of February to, to 27th of May. That's basically uh, four months. And we counted... 165 euthanized dogs. Uh, that's, that, that's, that, that's, that's a horrible thing. That's 80% of the dogs were killed. Why? Because they were aggressive. And, and the law is very specific on that. Now, in order to, to euthanize a dog, the dog should, uh, be, um, uh, should have an incurable, incurable disease first. Then, uh, this, the, the, this, the, I mean, this, it should be a terminal, term, the dog should be in a terminal state. And third, it should be in unbearable pain and suffering. So you need all these three things to, 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 for, for euthanasia to be legal. If the dog is sick, okay. If the dog is aggressive, now there is a three. Uh, there is a commission, and uh, there must be a, a rec and that's according to the Animal Welfare Act. They always need. They they do they assess the temperament of the dog, and it's the the head of the shell, the head of the the isolator. And it's one of the doctors, and it's a representative of a non-governmental organization like ours. So they have to phone us, and one of us will have to will have to go there and participate in that assessment. It's never been done actually. They do these protocols without the signature of the third person, and that's the third person, according to the Animal Welfare Act. That's a representative of a non-governmental organization who who deals with animal welfare. It's never been done. So they kill 165 dogs, according to them. And them only, they were aggressive, and and that's a horrible thing. And we started writing complaints. I mean, because that's uh, now we went to one of these. That I know they used to be called isolator um, right. place. It was at uh, Seslavsi uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and um, going on what we saw there and what they said and the neutering program in place, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, 
you couldn't fail to think, well, okay, you're doing something about it now. You've got a system, seems to be working okay. Mm -hmm. Good on you. What do you say to that? I'll say that uh, what is essential is invisible. Uh, when the end, uh, you don't see, you don't see the. Um, what didn't What didn't we see that you think we should have done? Well you, well, you don't see it. I mean, you can't see it because I mean, they won't let you in if they're doing something wrong. Actually, at the moment, they won't. But what, what do you think they they're doing? Are killing dogs, mm -hmm. and 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 mistreating dogs in such a way. Basically, some of the dog dies because of these surgical manipulations. I I, I can't even say that it's not even um, it's not neutering. I mean. I mean, I can only speculate whether they do it on purpose or simply because they don't know how to neuter a dog. But I mean, they do some surgical manipulations. Uh, they let the dogs on the street. Two days, three days later, they die uh, slow, uh, slowly and painfully, actually, from the complications of that surgery. And that's not job properly done. Right? That's not why we, we pay money. I mean, the taxpayers, I mean. Uh, what is essential is not visible. So we, uh, and uh, other, other, other dogs simply die from starvation, you see. Uh, and it, it, does, it does sort of strike me in this whole thing that somebody needs to do an undercover investigation because oh, yes. there's no hard evidence, is there? We you say it's invisible. And, and we don't have the potential. We don't have the potential, and these people are very careful, very crafty, and they, and they uh, actually, they've had the same people for the last maybe 15 years, actually, in the, that isolated. So they won't let anyone outside go in, go in there and start even... And that's because they probably suspect that we may try and infiltrate them with an outsider. Look, this is, this is something we, in 2008, we asked some information, that's, that's 11th of to the 12th, 2008, and we wanted... Now, th these are some of the diagnoses. Why? Because they say that, well, they... What, what is this you're showing me? Th this, is, this is a list, the number, these, this is a list of, 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 of dogs who actually died in the shelter which is supposed to, and they have four doctors there who are supposed to care for these animals and treat them. Just uh, to bring it up to date, they though, that the doc Dr. Nakoff, who's come in about a year ago, obviously yeah. we're going back several years on this. I know that he only started there a year ago. Now, according to him, you know, he's turning it around and putting all these things in place, and it is quite a different strategy. You're still not happy with that? I'm not happy with anything. Because how, how do you explain that? Uh, a reason for a dog to die uh, is cannibalism. So it's written down. Now, for uh, for that to happen, no, no. But this is 2008. Yeah, but the Animal Welfare Act was 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 uh, enforced in the, in January 2008. Are you not yeah, happy that that year, yes? Do you later. think things have changed now, though, or well, not? Uh, well, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know because we've given up. You know, we we don't. I, I don't even like to go in there now because I only see few cases, a few cages, and I, I see a few dogs inside, but I don't see the rest what's, what is essential. Bec I don't see why dogs are not on the streets. We don't see any dogs on the streets, so we don't know why. We can only suspect, but, but we can't prove it. And, say, and, and during the last five years, we've written, we've written three, 13, I think we have 13 petitions to, to the public prosecutor to, to go and investigate uh, this criminal activity, because uh, t to kill a dog, you have to cover it, cover your tracks, basically. And d they do all sorts of, uh, you no, know, um, uh, they manipulate documents, they forge documents just to cover it up, you see, basically. And they've been, they've been very, they mutated. But the thing is, nothing has been done, actually. I, mean, I, I, I think this story, yeah, I think suspicious. this story is going to run and run, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, for quite some time. So, well, this is obviously such an emotive, uh, very important and strong story. And I think it's one of those that's destined to run and run. I do think we need a strong investigative reporter in there to find out what's really going on. But uh, in the meantime, keep in touch and thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, Wendy. It's Thursday, day two, it's early evening, and let me introduce you to Dr. Simeon Pachev, who has the honor of being Borko's vet. But actually, I'm gonna to talk to you, if I may, perhaps in more general terms um, in this interview. Um, and this is a very general question, um, but you're well placed to answer it. What do you think the attitude in general is towards dogs in Bulgaria? What противоречиво. В смисъл българи на обича кучетата и домашните любимци. Те се отглеждат и като компаньони, 
в домовете им, отглеждат се и с дадено предназначение във връзка с охрана, отглеждат се и като състезателни прояви, отглеждат се и като изложбени животни. Но можем да кажем, че по принцип има изградена народна любов към домашните кучета и котки и към домашния любимец в България. There is no one, no, no one answer to the question. Um, there are many animals that have been looked after as companions, as working dogs, guarding dogs. Um, and in general, the Bulgarian sees the dogs as companions. I suppose that Borko, uh, his story ha has startled um, a lot of people for, for the deliberate cruelty that's uh, been involved. Is that an unusual case or, or do you see more, than, more of that than you would like to? Ови, това не е изолиран случай. Подобни случаи на жестокост не са само с Борко. Подобни случаи има в България, има и в нашата практика в град Плодив. Сблъскваме се с подобни случаи, но важното е, че те са някак си единични случаи, те са изолирани случаи. По-важно е, че в момента има много остра обществена обществена нагласа всички тези хора да бъдат подведени под наказателна отговорност, да бъдат заведени дела срещу тях и да да се прекратат всички тези случаи на жестоко отношение. Unfortunately, Borko's case was is not an isolated case. Um, it was extreme cruelty, yes, but uh, things happen. Also, there are many cases. There are cases coming to the practice as well, but um, on the upside, there are many people that are opposing that kind of cruelty and um, it is a positive thing that they want the perpetrators to be prosecuted. I understand though that that's um, quite a problem and it's very uh, unusual here to, uh, to actually get a prosecution in cases of animal welfare. Да, за съжаление, в момента, до момент, няма все още заведено дело с съответно присъда за наказателна отговорност за такова жестоко отношение към домашните любимци. Но аз смятам, че и сега вече е настъпил момента подобни неща да се случват. Защото отново ще кажа, че обществената нагласа е много широка хората изискват дори под тяхно въздействие парламента в България при всички тези случаи да бъдат с вече наказателна отговорност, а не само административна отговорност. Вследствие на което закона ще влезне в действие. Да, възможност не има активни 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 But Dr. Pachev is quite uh, confident that, that this will be happening anytime soon because the publicity reaction is very strong against extreme, and not just extreme, but just, uh, cases of cruelty. And um, there's this uproar from the pu public that they really want to see someone being finally uh, sued on a case like that. And because we have the legislation, we have the law, it just needs to be implemented. And um, after the pressure put by people like that <coughs> on the government, the law was changed and crimes like this are now um, considered serious crimes. They, they can lead to a prison sentence. Um, as a vet, I assume you have uh, quite strong views on um, the subject of uh, neutering Uh, dogs and obviously more in particular stray dogs. Отношението към кастрациите е много положително. 
Хората все повече се убеждават, че е добре домашните любимци да бъдат кастрирани. И хубавото е, че много организации, които се създават на частни начала от млади хора, се организират, за да се предприемат и ни посевместни кастрации на бездомните животни. В подобни кастрационни планове имат участие също общински дружества, имат участие кметства, имат участие и организации, които са на държавно ниво. Въобще в България в момента правилната насока, която е предприета по отношение на домашните любимци, това е насоката за кастриране на всички бездомни животни, стимулиране на кастрациите на домашните любимци чрез отменене на годишен данък, чрез помощ на тези хора, които са осъществили кастрация на домашните любимци. И по този начин хората все по-убедително предприемат тази стъпка през последните поне 5-6 години. The uh, opinion is quite positive. Uh, more and more people are now starting to castrate their pets. And um, it's uh, a lot of young people actually involved in programs like that. They are part of NGOs, but also um, the, council is, the councils are involved, municipalities. So uh, Dr. Pachev is convinced this is the way forward and he's actually seeing it for the past five years. The number of castration is definitely rising and there are um, stimulus for people that have castrated their pets, such as weaving the council tax for owning a pet and there are campaigns going on. I can add that от тези програми кастрационни минават и през нашата клиника. А, преди всичко от а, частни сдружения, които непрекъснато записват и водат бездомни домашни котки, кучета, с които се осъществява кастрации и стремежа след това те да бъдат също одомашнени чрез а, намирането на приемни семейства. Provet practice is actually involved with many organizations who bring in stray and pets as well, animals to be castrated here. And um, they often work for the further rehoming of the, those animals. They, when there is a private organization involved, they do try to rehome the animal and not return it back to the street. Okay. There seems to be a little bit of a mystery uh, that, that we've sort of been talking about since we've got here. Um, in Sofia, for example, a couple of years ago, there were tens and tens of thousands of stray dogs. And apparently, sort of nowadays, there are hardly any. What's happened to all those dogs? I can't answer because in Sofia they are not able to kill the dogs. But with satisfaction, I can say that Програмите, които се водят в град Плодив, чрез общински профилакториум за бездомни кучета, създаден преди 15 години и кастрационните програми, които се въведоха, в град Плодив нямаме проблем с много, много бездомни животни и някъде до 80% от бездомните животни вече са овладяни чрез кастрация, което е много добър практичен отговор на тези програми и реализация. Доктор Пачев не може да коментира на ситуацията в София, но той е казва, че благодаря на спей-нюта програма, за консулта за няколко години в Таун, е било много добро резултат на улицата в Пловдив, като нумерът на анимали се увеличава. Uh, he is saying that 80% of the population is now under control because of implementing such programs. So in this city, in Plovdiv, there isn't that same um, uh, anomaly between the figures that I've just mentioned between, say, a couple of years ago and this year. 
uh, that's only perhaps peculiar to Sofia. Is that what you mean? Отговора на този въпрос изисква да се върнем във времето назад. В България имаше различни политики на държавно и общинско отношение към домашните любимци. Първоначално програмата изискваше всички домашни любимци да бъдат карантинирани в общинския в общинското създание от общината профилакториум за бездомни кучета и евентуално, ако не бъдат одомечнени в срок от 30 дни един месец, те да бъдат ехтаназинарени. Той е сумъртвен. Това беше първоначалната политика. Сега в рамките на последните 5 до 7 години политиката е свързана с извършването на обезпързитявания, кастрация и връщане на бездомното кученце и котенце на даденото място, откъдето е то било е взето. Следователно, намаляването на популацията в град Плодив първоначално се дължеше на първата програма, която беше свързана с одомашняване и ефтаназиране, и сега тя се поддържа чрез кастрационната програма, която се осъществява в последните 7 години. Дързалца, да отговоря на това въпроса, ние трябва да го върваме в време, и да има различни национални политики за това да се върваме с стрей популацията. Това е 7 години, до 7 години, това програма consisted of um, catching the stray, quarantining the animal for up to 30 days in the man municipal shelter, and um, if, it's not, if the animal is not rehomed, it's euthanized. And now, after, like, for five, since five to seven years, the program has changed. It is the spay neuter that have been uh, implemented. So basically, the animal is ca caught. Then it's processed with uh, castration, uh, they're uh, vaccinated against rabies, treated against fleas and ticks, wormed, and then they're released back to the area where they were caught initially. So um, Dr. Pacha thinks the result of decreasing the numbers of strays and poverty is a combination of those two programs. Okay, okay. So, um, So as far as you're aware, you don't support this opinion, uh, which seems to be rife in some quarters, that dogs are actually being, all these strays are being taken off the streets, taken to the shelters, and really being beaten to death. Because that's what I've been told in, in uh, you know, talking to other people. And I'm obviously I'm interested in your view. Аз мога да отговоря конкретно за град Пълдив. Не мога да изкажа мнение на национално ниво. Но тук за град Пълдив смятам, че строго се изпълнява и реализира тази кастрационна програма. Осъществява се кастриране, обезпързитяване и връщане на бездомното куче и коте на мястото, откъдето то е било... Dr. Pachev cannot comment on national level, but he is uh, he's a part of the program that is been implementing now with the TNR. Uh, so he thinks the problem in Plovdiv has been solved, it, it is being solved okay. by implementing the program of mm -hmm. catch and return, mm -hmm. catch castrate return. Uh, has, the, has the doctor heard these rumors before? Uh, Да, а иначе, нали, чували ли сте такива обвинения, че животни изчезват по приучите, биват събирани от найти фирми? Има ли такова нещо в държавата, нали, като дори да са слухове, до вас достигали са? Значи, подобни слухове, да, достигали са и те основно касаят град София, като регион, откъдето се чували подобни слухове. Но... Тук в град Пловдив тази кастрационна програма има такъв успех практичен благодарение на това, че 
самата община има на ети 6 ветеринарни лекаря, които участват в тази програма. И другото, което е съюза на ветеринарните лекари, регионалния ветеринарно медицински съюз, също се включва с отделните клиники и лекари към тази програма в определен график, който ние изграждаме самите в съюза и участваме също за реализирането на тези кастрации. Yes, that Dr. Pachov has heard rumors, but mostly about Sofia, the area in Sofia. But uh, for Plovdiv, there are basically six vets hired by the municipality to work on the program. And also um, the vet associ association, there are members from the vet association, vets again working on the program. So they work together with the municipality and this has shown results, good results. Thank you. Now, um, I started the interview by mentioning Borko, so I think I'll end it with mentioning him as well. Um, obviously, you said that uh, it was a terrible incident, but not completely isolated. Um, as a vet, someone who obviously completely respects animals, um, what on earth do you think of that kind of deliberate cruelty when you see it? Подобна екстремна жестокост много трудно се коментира. Аз споменах, че това не е единствени случаи в България и много трудно може да се приеме подобно нечовешко отношение. Не знам как да го коментирам. Това е, това е някакво психично отклонение при подобни хора, които не можем ни да осъзнаем, не знаем защо ги извършва, кои са мотивите да извършат подобно нещо. Просто и ни оставаме крайно изненадани и огорчени, че се случват подобни неща. Ни работим преди всичко с хора, които се грижат за домашни любимци и за бездомни животни. Тоест, ни контактуваме с хора, които, в които откриваме много много хуманност, много добрина, много чевещина. И, и изведнъж всичко това не можем да го приемем. Тази жестокост. Не можем да осъзнаем. Доктор Пъчев е лост за хърц, да изкрива за кроути. Това не е хората, които са не разбират мисленето Um, it's even like a psychotic condition of people like that, like Borkos abuser. And because this is a clinic, um, the team here meets up with people who, are, who love their pets, who care about them. And um, to them, this is something they do not understand. They are really disappointed and uh, the inhumanity of the act is just uh, has left them without even being able to comment it because they don't, we cannot understand it. Okay. Yes, I, I know it, it, uh, it definitely leaves you uh, speechless. Um, but uh, I'll end by saying thank you so much for welcoming us to your veterinary practice. And I know you're uh, considered by thousands of people across the world as being quite a hero for looking after Borco. So thank you very much. Thank you. So we were just leaving Dr. Pachev's practice and we heard a rumor suddenly that there were two dogs here who um, had been brought in off the streets and the people who brought them in actually want to adopt them and have them as their own. So for us in the UK, that's a very different way of going about it. So Orlin is very kindly um, going to talk me through sort of what's happening here. The most delightful little fellow, isn't he? Just tell me about him in particular, because he's one of the dogs who's been brought in. Yes, he's uh, come uh, before uh, two hours in our uh, clinic, and uh, after we make a clinic exam, we uh, saw that the dog has uh, scabies, and we start the treatment immediately. After we make um, blood samples, we took blood samples, and we saw he has an internal infection, and we start to give him already antibiotics, and uh, we will think it will be okay, and will be uh, became a great. Uh, a big dog and uh, maybe he found very well owners. Is this a fairly common thing that happens? Um, yes, um, 
Uh, we we work with uh, rescue organization and uh, they brought to us a lot of uh, dogs and cats and we help them and they um, find uh, people who want uh, to treat and to make uh, make them own pets. But do do people as in the general public can they just see a little chap like this on the street think oh I'd like to rescue him off this street and they bring him into you to sort him out and then they can keep him. Yeah, we, we have that kind of people, yes, we have. Mostly our uh, childs. Childs, you mean young people? Yes, young people. They, they, have, uh, they help a lot of uh, the homeless uh, pets. Excellent. I mean, wh why do you think that is? Is that quite a recent thing that started to happen with, with you know, the sort of next generation of animal lovers? I, I think, yes. We, we are the start of next generation animal lovers, yes, yes. Well, he's absolutely, he or she, sorry, I missed that. He uh, or she. Sorry. Oh, we don't she, just. It's she, she. she. Yes. And I've just seen a little flea on her head. So I'm not even going to give her a little tickle. Oh, we already uh, give oh. her, but it's uh, um, 20, sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, well, 40, it's. 48. Oh, hours yes. Till they die, all of them. No, exactly, yes. It's no, it's no reflection on you. It's time, no, no. <laughs> it's just need the time to die, okay? Yes, yeah, so what I mean to say is I'm resisting the temptation to touch the little mite. <laughs> but better don't touch it because he has uh, skin scabies and it's dangerous for people. Yeah. So well, I'm sure very soon she's going to look absolutely gorgeous and in tip-top condition. And thank you very much for introducing me to her. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> mm -hmm. 